You know, I've been thinking a lot about my favorite teacher, and it was really hard to figure out who it was. I had a whole list, a lineup of people. And then I started to think, okay, what's the commonality between all of these people? Miss Burton in third grade. Uh, I went to a Catholic school, everyone was a nun, and then there was Miss Burton and I got her. And wow, she was like the person next door. Um, and we did crazy little things that you never did with Sister Della Rosa or some of the other uh, teachers that I had. And so that that got me thinking, you know, what about other people? When I was in college, there was Dr. Cronenberg, and she was from Spain, um, and we had a really small class, probably six people, um, and that made it special. But the thing that was so special about that experience was the fact that we were natural. We really liked one another, and we joked, but we really learned a tremendous amount. And so then that common thread started to go uh, and it was unwinding. And then I thought of tea drikers and I thought how privileged I was to have tea drikers be not my teacher, but my mentor. Tea drikers, um, she has a place in history. Um, people might remember Jane Addams from Hall House and the beginning of social work, the beginning of child labor laws, the first kindergarten in, in the States. A lot came out of, of Hall House. And when Jane Addams died, T. Dreikers was the person who took her place, which was probably not a place that you could easily take. And what made T. really different um, was she was so kind and she recognized every person. And I, at the time that I first met her, I was in graduate school taking courses in Adlerian psychology and she was at the Adler Institute. And I remember I loved art and she taught art therapy. So I, I didn't know anything about T. Dreikers. I just signed up because I was attracted to the course. And um, the first day that I came in, she was at the door and she greeted each person individually um, with a handshake, introduced herself. Um, and right then and there, she started a bond. Um, she remarked about maybe what you had on uh, or asked a question about where you came from. Uh, interestingly enough, for people who know Chicago, there's usually a couple questions. People always ask one another, you know, who you are usually implies, um, you know, what ethnic group uh, do you belong to? Uh, <clears throat> and where do you live kind of implies a lot uh, in a place like Chicago. And so she would ask those kinds of questions. And immediately she started a community of people in that classroom. And I, I am so uh, amazed that one of the things that has, I think, left me um, with a mark of teaching is the fact that it's important to build a family, a community in a classroom. And so as I was moving um, through my course of studies and, and teaching at the same time, I kept thinking, you know, what is the most inviting thing for people? They need to feel that they're safe, they're secure. They need to feel part of a group. They need to be aware that they're a contributor to the group. And that's what I learned. Uh, from T. Um, one of the things I, I just want to share with you, I don't even know if this book is available anymore, but she wrote a book uh, called Cows Can Be Purple Too. And um, <clears throat> she just remembered that when she was a young child, she made a cow that was purple. And her teacher was like, cows aren't purple. And so that was something that was left with her 
that she would never tell a student, a young child, that cows can't be purple. <laughs>